And I would like to begin by inviting the founding director of the Global Partnership to End Violence Against Children, Dr. Susan Bissell, who will be speaking about collaboration. end of the day, get to try and keep everybody awake here. Um, before I start, I actually want to, uh, to, um, to say that the, the young man who spoke on the previous uh, panel when he said living with violence is not living, I don't know about you, but that really struck me as something uh, pretty profound and uh, wasn't in my script, but I wanted to start with that. Um, so I want to thank you all actually for being here and being part of this partnership. I, we've never seen so many leaders come together to prevent and respond to violence against children. You're going to hear a little more about that from the rest of the panel here. But I think it's really pretty clear from today and from the work that you've all been doing over the past many years that this is not a forgotten issue. It's firmly, squarely on the map and on our agendas, and this summit is the start of the bold and transformative change that we will deliver, that will deliver the SDG targets to end all forms of violence. We have decisively shifted debate from problems to solutions. This is deliberate. We know why we need to act. More than one billion children are victims of violence. We heard that several times today. But we're now focused on how we will change the lives of these children with them. This summit has confirmed the importance of the INSPIRE strategies as a common framework for those working on implementation, finance, research, and evaluation. But INSPIRE is itself only a child. We must all commit to nurturing and promoting it to fill its full potential. Amongst many inspiring speeches here today, I'd like to draw attention to the challenge that the Deputy Secretary General laid out early in the morning. She asked us, to prepare for the high-level political forum in 2019, when ministers will review SDG 16, while presidents and prime ministers will meet for the first four-yearly summit to mobilize further actions to accelerate implementation for all 17 of the Sustainable Development Goals. To seize this opportunity, we must support our pathfinding countries, and I hope they multiply many-fold who have come here to explain their commitments to achieving measurable reductions in violence. And I just want to say to all the leaders of those countries and all of the people that are here from ministries and departments, we're absolutely thrilled that you express such enthusiasm for this new partnership and that you put yourselves forward as the first pathfinders, as we call them in that little video clip, our champions. If these countries demonstrate results and you are already, then others will follow. It says in our strategy in a different way, but that success will follow success. My question to all of us is this. How quickly can we demonstrate progress on 16.2 in particular in each of these countries? This summit has underlined the need to recommit to the idea of partnership. This is not a natural state, and I came to see that as we began to set the partnership up. I founded the Global Partnership to End Violence Against Children to help build a movement at all levels, <laughs> local, subnational, national, regional, and international. This Solution Summit is a huge boost for that movement, but it's only the beginning, and you don't start a movement sitting in New York. Movements build up from the ground from the inside out. Each year between now and 2030, we will need to redouble our efforts if we are going to come close to meeting, the to meeting the promise that Agenda 2030 made to children, that they would live free from fear and violence. And with that, cognizant of the third goal of the partnership, which is to strengthen collaboration, I'm very pleased to invite to the stage my good friend Lisa Witter, who is going to launch our collaboration platform, and she's got a few seconds to tell you about that. Lisa, are you here? Come and join us. Please join me in welcoming Lisa of Apolitical. Thank you. 